it's it's oh if you if you did that in australia you would get massive fines not to mention the people around you just completely shaming you like there's some sort of unspoken responsibility you clean up after your dog hello and welcome back to another video now i have made quite a few videos on my channel about things that i love about the netherlands things i've missed about the netherlands weird things about the culture that i love and miss and my favorite parts of the language and and all of the things my channel really encompasses how much i miss the netherlands being back here in australia however there are some things that i don't miss there are some things that i'm glad that we have here in australia so i wanted to make a video about the things that i don't miss about the netherlands things that i don't really gel with so without anything further let's get into the video so the very first thing that probably stands out the most to me and is like the biggest difference between the netherlands and australia is obviously the space so here in australia everyone has a great big backyard everyone has a freestanding house you have access to lots of parks and towns are usually quite spread out because everyone kind of wants the same amount of space. In between towns, there's lots of natural bush still and there's lots of animals and wallabies and kangaroos that you can see there. Heaps and heaps of kookaburras and a lot of native wildlife. This was one of the things that I missed so much when I was in the Netherlands. When I was, when we were still living there, I would ring up my mum and get her to just like put the phone out the window so that I could hear all of the birds and all of those sounds that are really specific to Australia. So my biggest thing that I don't miss about the Netherlands is how crowded and developed it is. It's super, super compact and tight. Most people live in quite small apartments if you're in a city or you live in a house that really doesn't have much of a backyard, a small paved area to be able to eat outside is usually all you get even in the smaller regional towns. Your neighbours are right next to you so you can kind of hear and know everything that's going on in the street. And I know there are some upsides to this, it really promotes a sense of community but I just missed the nature. I missed like going out the door and walking for five minutes and, you know, kind of feeling like I'm in the bush or being able to drive 10 minutes out of town and feeling like you are full on in the outback or, you know, full on in like the bush and people are riding their horses there or you're able to see and hear some of those native wildlife and those and those birds and animals. In the Netherlands, driving or catching a train between towns Usually most of that land has been used, it's been used either for development or it's being used as agricultural land. So there's much more efficiency in terms of how the Netherlands uses that land and that has to be that way because of the size of the country, but I miss the space, like I can breathe. <laughs> so the next point is probably a lot to do with the space and how expensive it becomes. Space is a commodity in the Netherlands and there's limited space and there's even more limited space that's there for living. So in most of the cities, and I know we had this issue in Amsterdam when we were looking for an apartment, but it's almost impossible. Like it is ridiculously expensive. Now I know that most European cities have a massive, massive high rental price to be able to live in them and that kind of comes along with that territory i know obviously it's more expensive and difficult to find an apartment in melbourne or sydney or any of the capital cities as it is to find a place in regional towns however when we were renting a small studio apartment it was actually an attic that had been turned into an apartment the amount of money that we paid for that studio apartment for like 30 square meters was the same amount of money that you could go in Melbourne and get like a two to three bedroom terrace house. So even city wise, it doesn't really compare. Amsterdam is near impossible to find a place. We were looking for about six months before we found our apartment and you almost have to know someone to know someone and time it perfectly that someone's moving out so that you can basically jump into the apartment straight away. And there is no way that I miss that crazy, competitive, overpriced market at all. When we get back to the Netherlands, we will not be looking for an apartment in Amsterdam, that is for sure. 
I think more into the rental system is this really weird concept of being able to not only provide work pay slips to prove that you've got consistent income but they have to be three times the rent and I don't know if this is just specific to the Amsterdam rental market because we haven't had a lease in other places so let me know in the comments below if this is more of just a Amsterdam or city arrangement because of the competitiveness but to prove to someone that you earn three times the rent and the second person who's living in the house their whole pay doesn't count either. They only take a percentage from the second person's salary. It really limits your options. It makes it incredibly difficult to find and apply for an apartment. And I definitely understand kind of the necessity that you can prove to someone that you have enough income to pay for the place. But if someone wants to spend more of their payment or more of their income on rent, let them. As long as they're meeting the requirements of being they've got consistent work and they can pay for the apartment then what is it to you if 50% or 60 70% of their pay is going on rent I just don't feel like that's the real estate agents business I don't know I just I don't miss this system the rental system is crazy in the Netherlands and I don't miss it I think the how we've got it here in Australia is much easier to navigate especially as a foreigner I mean I'm very incredibly lucky that I understand Dutch and I have a Dutch partner so I know a lot of expats that definitely kind of feel locked out of the market or locked out of certain opportunities because they don't understand the language to that level but again I don't miss the rental market in the Netherlands at all okay I know Everyone says this who is not from the Netherlands or actually most people from the Netherlands will have to whinge about the weather. The winter is long. It's fun for like a month. New Year's, Christmas, cold, it's cozy. It's fun, it's really nice. It's super, super different to what we do here in Australia. So I loved it. Give me like a month of winter and I'm sweet. I've, you know, it's fun to like pull on some layers and you know, every now and then it obviously snows. So that's kind of cool. But the winter goes forever. Like I remember the winter lasting until like March, April, May, you were still getting cold days. So this just blew my mind because here in Australia, you have like three months tops, cold weather, it's done, dusted, the rest of the year is somewhat nice. The winter is not my favorite thing. I do not miss the cold, long, drawn out winters. We, it gets dark at like 4.30, 5 o'clock when you're getting home from work. I don't miss it. I don't miss that at all. Okay, this next one completely shocked me when I first went to Europe. You have to pay for public toilets. Why? Like, why are they not supported by the government? Why is the government and the council, the city council, not responsible for cleaning them? I don't understand when public toilets didn't become public responsibility. Like the individual has to pay to run the public toilet. This, oh my God, I don't know why it annoys me so much, but I do not miss having to pay for public toilets. There are public toilets everywhere here in Australia, at supermarkets, at petrol stations, in shopping centers, they are everywhere. And no, you don't have to pay for them. And it really irritates me that you've got these um, green sort of like snail shells. I don't know what you call them in Dutch. I always forget the name. I obviously don't have to use them, but you've got these free facilities for men to be able to pee in the city, but then you don't have the same thing for women. Women will always be forced to pay for a toilet if they need to. This was an issue when I was pregnant in the Netherlands and you obviously go to the toilet a lot more. It's just annoying. I find it rude. I don't want to do it. I don't miss that about the Netherlands. Okay, moving on to food. I don't know if this is just me being a massive food snob or being spoilt for choice because kind of growing up in Melbourne in a massive food scene and growing up in such a massive multicultural city that you've got a massive amount of choice and it's affordable and it's high, high quality. And I just really struggle in the Netherlands to find good quality, tasty, delicious, reasonably priced food when eating out. I would 100% always rather cook for myself in the Netherlands than eat out, 100%. Like I literally cannot think of a single restaurant or place where I was so blown away that I thought that was worth the cost 
or it was yummy enough to want to go back a second time. Like I really am not impressed by the food scene in the Netherlands, not to mention just like the national dishes. And I know everyone's going to come at me in the comments, but Hutspot, it's just not super tasty. It's like Boerkool. I don't know. It's struggling. You've got so many delicious things right next to you guys, like France and Germany with all their sausages. And then you get to the Netherlands and everything's potatoes. I don't know. I don't really miss the cuisine at all. In the Netherlands, no one cleans up their dog poo. I swear to God, walking down Amsterdam, like walking down the streets in Amsterdam, you have to watch where you're walking because people walk their dogs through the streets. Totally fine. You're allowed to do that but they don't pick it up. There is dog poo all over the floor, all over the sidewalk. And even when you go to a dog park where, you know, it's expected, it's still everywhere. It's, it's, oh, if you, if you did that in Australia, you would get massive fines, not to mention the people around you just completely shaming you. Like there's some sort of unspoken responsibility you clean up after your dog that's just what you do if you take on the responsibility of having a dog you are taking on the responsibility to clean up sh i don't miss it i don't miss having to always look where i'm walking in amsterdam because the sidewalks are covered in dog poo i really that's another thing i do not miss about the netherlands my last few things that i don't miss about the netherlands is bike theft and I know that this is probably more common obviously because we lived in a city but even just cycling to work and having to make sure that you're using two or three locks and always attaching it to something that can't move or something that's stuck to the ground it's tiring and it's happened to me before where I finished night shift at a restaurant and came out at midnight it was like one o'clock in the morning or something and my bike had been stolen the trams and the trains don't run that late even in the city so obviously had to walk home and it's shitty it's crappy bike theft is a real thing and i don't miss it my very last thing that i do not miss about the netherlands is smoking cigarettes here in australia are astronomically high in price there's massive massive taxes on cigarettes and there's huge ad campaigns directed at children to not take up smoking and how bad it is for you and to not litter with cigarette butts so like massive campaigns that I remember seeing on TV as a kid always and my really big thing with the Netherlands is how many people smoke but how accepted it is to smoke in public places so smoking out the front of supermarkets and smoking on the terrace when you're at a restaurant and this does my head in because I'm trying to eat a meal and I've got cigarette smoke coming from one side, the other side. There's people around me all smoking cigarettes and all I want to do is enjoy some fresh air and a nice meal on the terrace. And it's incredibly frustrating because I'm not used to it. Coming from Australia, you cannot smoke in bus stops, you can't smoke at a public pool, you can't smoke in parks, you can't smoke out the front of supermarkets, and you most certainly cannot smoke outside a restaurant. So it really irritates me that smoking is super acceptable and that there's cigarette butts literally everywhere, all over the sidewalks, and it just makes for a really dirty city and smoking's just not my thing. So yeah, it's incredibly disappointing to see that it's still like super accepted. So that is it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Are there some things about your own culture that you probably don't gel with that much? Are there things that you don't like about the Netherlands? Let me know in the comments below. On a whole, I love the Netherlands and I love what they represent and we can't wait to get back there. These are just some of the things that I know that I missed a lot about Australia when we were back in the Netherlands and I've been appreciating them a lot since we've been back here as well. So always leave me a comment I love to go through and read them if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video till then bye